Really glad to be here. And uh, have you ever, I'm in, uh, just a little story. Because I was stuck on the Bay Bridge right now, and I thought, I am not going to make it to this event. And I was really, really terrified. And have you ever been on, the, on, in a, on a bridge or somewhere where you had to be somewhere, and, and I thought, well, I'm going to be talking to a whole bunch of great people, and I'm stuck on this bridge. So what, you know, and by the way, I, I have uh, um, the, uh, the blessing, I would say, to drive a Tesla. So not only that, I was in the fast lane, and it was, it was slow. So speaking of fast, this is what I want to talk about today, is uh, fast. How we make fast, faster IT. How we drive this connectivity. And you heard our, my friend uh, Doug here prior to me. Yeah, we do use Splunk, and we do use MuleSoft, so kudos for, uh, and uh, heads up for Doug there. But I want to tell you a story about Cisco and Cisco IT and the journey that we've been on. And I think you've met some of, uh, some of my team who are in the audience. But I want to share with you sort of the, the story about Cisco and uh, where we've been. So at Cisco, this, I just want to start with the landscape. As you can see here, we have a pretty big landscape. When you talk about data, big data, we don't have a problem with big data. We have big data. 60 ter 60, no, I said terabytes, petabytes. Does everybody know what a peta is? That's a big, big data. But what you do with that data and how you get access to that data is really, really important. Driving the insights to that data is really important, but getting to it fast, driving the connectivity to that data, and making sure that you're getting the analytics, the insights, and making the best decisions for your company. You can see the constituents that we have to deal with every day. I'd like to say we have 73,000 CIOs at Cisco who think they know more about IT than IT. Um, but it's a tough, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing and it's also a, it's a tough environment because you have to be on the game. You have to be, we're talking to everyone about how to get connectivity, how to drive faster IT. Well, we have to show it every single day. And you can see here some of the environments that we have. So what are the other challenges? Security. I can tell you right now that somebody's trying to get in. Somebody's trying to break in to the four walls that we run at Cisco. And automatically, through connectivity and through fast, through the fast integration, we're able to stamp out about 1.5 million intrusion attempts every single day. Every day, somebody's trying to get in. So we have to stamp out those bugs and those intruders every single day. And by the way, sometimes those intrusions happen by our own mistakes, clicking a, a link or opening an attachment or, or things like that. So we have to constantly look at that and look at it in an automated way. Not just like we're sitting there watching this thing, but we need tools, we need automation to be able to do that. We need connectivity in bringing that together. So you look at some of the challenges that we have that I, that I face every single day. But guess what? The company is saying, our executives are saying, still not good enough. Not only is it not good enough, we have to be the examples for the industry. We have to show connectivity. We have to show speed. And we have to show how we're digitizing Cisco, how we're digitizing our own company. And what you see here is you go, you have to go faster. So faster IT, more agile, more simple. But at the same time, what they never ask you is, oh, I need this security thing. I need a quality thing. I need a compliance thing. That comes with, that's table stakes. So we have to go faster but we have to do it with speed. 
So those two things coming together, driving the business outcomes. How we drive continuous innovation, how we drive the digitization of Cisco. So bringing those things together and having to do that at a very fast pace. We have what we call this digital process. And I'll tell you, it's one of the key foundations to this digital process is that connectivity, is that layer that brings us all together. Everything from how do we simplify everything, how do we simplify our environment? We have to keep driving simplification across everything that we do. But then how, when we understand what to simplify, we understand our policies and our processes, how do we automate that? How do we drive the automation? How do we pull these flexible assets together, whether it's network, compute, storage, whether it's an application, how do we pull those things together in a secure way and then how do we continuously monitor and adapt those and drive improvement across everything that we do? So we have what we call this digital process. And we in Cisco IT, we follow this very closely. And so I want to share with you what our key strategy is. Our key strategy is to simplify everything. To simplify everything we do around our, what, the experience that we drive for our customers, our partners, our own engineering organization, our field, and what we do inside of our own IT organization. How we drive simplification of our policies, processes, etc. And then how we use technology, the automation capabilities that we drive at Cisco, but that we partner with folks like MuleSoft and Splunk, as a, as a matter of fact, how we pull those technologies together to do what I call extending the cloud. Meaning that you know, years ago, we, uh, we put a, an architecture in place, and we called it a virtualized architecture, where we said we had all these compute assets, these network assets in different organizations, in different locations. We said we were going to virtualize them, network compute storage. But guess what? That wasn't good enough. Because the application folks were saying, well, you know, you gave me network compute storage, but now I need the other parts of the stack. I need my app server, web server, IDE, et cetera, database schema. So we started virtualizing that. So digitizing the whole IT stack, making it simpler for our application developers to do their job. Not in weeks, not in months, in fact, sometimes years, or a year, maybe not years, but it took a long time, but in minutes. We need to do this in minutes. We need to extend the cloud. We need to automate and move up the stack, and we need to also move right, meaning how do we connect to other public clouds, and left toward how do we continually take what we've learned and move that toward the business process of our company and the policies to put the power of the applications in the hands of the business. And to be able then to take the insights from that data, from, from the data that we derive, and be able to quickly make decisions, driving insightful data, not just big data. You saw from the first chart, I have big data, but how are we gaining insights from that data? How are we driving operational excellence? And how are we building a culture of innovation, of connectivity. And then over the top, making sure that everything's secure and that we're driving this notion of continuous delivery, meaning an agile process for how we deliver everything that we do. We moved from a, what we call a waterfall methodology, and I think everyone is aware of sort of the, the normal uh, waterfall, project life cycle methodology, from two years ago to now, we were about 20% agile and 80% waterfall to quite the opposite. We're 80% agile and 20% waterfall. 
So, but building that foundation to be able to do that has been really key. And what do I mean? I'm going to talk about extending the cloud. Really looking at the applications. How do we use the cloud, and how do we build that through a digital network? I'll share with you sort of the, the key components to this, which is really about building this digital storefront. The digital storefront is where everyone in Cisco, whether you want to order a, a handheld device, a computer, or you want to order an application environment, this is where you go to get that done. And in the middle here is this sort of, this, this is where the, all the brains happen. This orchestration layer is how it all comes together through policy and how we build up these assets here on the architecture. You can see how we build assets to be able to drive contextual insights and experiences at the top. And you can see here that through a programmable infrastructure, we're able to do that. But as we move up the stack, one of the challenges that we had was, how do I get access to all of the information and the applications? How do we pull that together? How do we pull that together through a common set of APIs that can get access so I don't have to keep building things over and over again? So I don't create point solutions every single time. And we were doing that before. An application group would go off and build an application and then you know, build their sort of silo. And so having this, this layer, this API layer, has been really, really key for us. And you could see what that looks like here is this, it's, and it's integrated into our platform as a service layer. So how do we actually drive the orchestration of the services, the service layer itself, and drive the integration of all of our applications? You can see here it's, it's integrated. It's part of our foundation. It's critical to our foundation. And it's critical to all of the upper layers. So whether I want an application, an ERP service, or whether I want a, you know, an, a call out to salesforce.com, or whether I need uh, so whatever kind of service, that, uh, that API layer is very, very integral into everything that we do. And I'll share with you a use case here. A use case taking that architecture you can see here that this, this layer here, this API orchestration layer, we've built this as part of our customer service experience, what we call the Technical Assistance Center. So in the Technical Assistance Center is where we communicate, where uh, if you're a customer, you have a problem, you want to open a ticket, you can come in through a browser, or you could come in through a handheld device, a mobile device. Or if you're a large customer, let's say a Facebook or let's say you know, one of our other larger customers, we communicate through that API layer from system to system, more of a B2B type of connection. So all three of these capabilities come through that API layer. And we launched this, I think we started uh, about a year ago, but we really, really launched this in, in January of 2016. And I think we're at, uh, you know, this is just, it's just starting to scale. And we're, we're seeing about 2.6 million hits, or 2.6 6 million transactions uh, every month. And that continues to move more and more up the stack that continues to drive, you know, the scalability of that has really, really uh, been just great to, to have. So having that, that ability to create that foundational layer and from whatever device, whatever browser, or even any, any machine, 
being able to come through and connect via that orchestration layer. So that connectivity of being part of our overall architecture has been very, very key for us. And the impact, the impact of this has been tremendous. So we have reusable services, greater capabilities, self-service driven model, and this is a really an environment for innovation. And what we've been able to do here with this first one is really reusability, driving greater efficiency, being able to build these integrations at twice the speed. And we're even seeing greater than twice the speed these days. But one of the things that I talk about with my team is faster IT. We need to continually move the bar, not just from hours or from days from, to hours, but I want to see the, these builds happening in minutes. Driving toward faster IT is really, really key. Driving a self-service model, you saw from, that, from my chart, is being able to build up that environment, an application environment, then being able to use that architecture to build these applications, gain access to the right information at the right time, and using that layer of API, that connectivity, this API layer one of the things that I talk about even with my business units is we, we continually need that common API layer because it's the glue for how we pull all of the pieces together, how we pull the right analytics from the right place, how we implement applications at half the speed. Being able, we, we used to build applications in four, in four months. Now we're building them in less than four weeks. So it's really, really driving exponential opportunity for us in IT. And encourage innovation. Being able to increase our productivity. We're seeing developers do a heck of a lot more in the same amount of time. And being able to use that, that foundation, that self-serve model, the reusability, being able to build services that everyone else could use. And you see that it's, it's just, uh, it's been quite an amazing uh, journey with, uh, you know, we've been working with Mulesoft here for the past several years. And, uh, and I think we're really starting to see, you know, putting this into real business value, see the benefits of what that API layer can do and then how that integrates with our own architecture. This, program, this notion of programmability, this notion of how do we move more and more toward software-defined architecture, software-defined networking. But in order to make that happen, you need this glue, you need this layer to be able to get the right resources orchestrated, to get the right resources to build those applications, to build them faster, and to increase the productivity of your organization. So overall, that, that connectivity, that speed, being able to come back and talk to the business in terms of outcomes. What are the outcomes that we want to achieve? And how are we using this to help digitize our company. Being able to talk about how that API layer, you know, because when you talk to the business, and you start talking about APIs, even though we're a tech, technology company, you talk about APIs and we're building out this, this architecture and this foundation, they look at you like, what the heck are you talking about? All I want to do is go faster. All I want to do is be simpler, be more agile. But being able to then use that architecture to talk in terms of this is what we've done to go faster. This is how we're building your capabilities in half the time. 
This is how we're driving productivity and reducing our cost in how we deliver that. And I have to, I have to continually reduce my budget every year by at least 5%. So I have to look for new ways to keep driving that productivity. So at the same time, really driving that level of quality. And if I know that that API layer there is there, that connectivity, and I'm getting access to this data, and it's very well defined, that quality goes up. And if I'm able to build that architecture in a more self-serve model, automating and moving up the stack, extending the cloud up, that I know that I'm, gonna, I'm driving standards, that I'm driving quality, that resiliency comes with, with, the, with the architecture, and that I'm compliant. Those are really important things because the business will never ask you about that. They just want to go fast. They just want their outcomes. So if we can do that, do it faster, drive productivity, we'll be able to drive this digitization. And I'm sure that everyone in this room is being asked to go faster, to drive productivity. You know, this whole notion of digitization, if you ask 100 people what that means, you're going to get at least 97 different answers. So, but being able to go back and say, I've now automated this stack. I've now improved the productivity. I've now taken my policies and my processes from a business perspective, and I've automated them. And if you could talk about that, you could talk about how you're digitizing your own company. So this is what we're doing at Cisco. There's a lot behind this. There's a lot of things that we're, we got on the, uh, on the horizon, working with MuleSoft, um, working with, uh, with, with many of our, our partners. This is the glue. And uh, really, really uh, glad to be here with, with all of you. Hopefully that you've, you've learned uh, in, the, in the last uh, sessions how to really bring this together. And uh, I just wanted to come, come to the event, share our story, share what we're doing at Cisco. And I wish you uh, a great rest of the event. And good luck. Thanks.